So I will be trying to be relatively brief. And the paper kind of came out of uh, you know, my study of Russian formalism, and there was a conference on formalism, and you know, it's very difficult to say anything you know about the old movement that I kind of was thinking about it, and uh, suddenly an idea occurred to me that there is something similar between uh, between Shkowski and Karl Schmidt, and eventually Karl. Popper. Yeah, I kind of a conjoined them together because you know the old 19th century metaphysical trio of beauty, justice, and the rule. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that which is justice. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <That's what else. laughs> uh, so <laughs> so uh, I was kind of looking for the similarity, and there are a number of similarities. Um, the way they formulate their accounts and the way they kind of relate to their predecessors and so on. However, what is really the most significant for this meeting today is their mistrust to patterns, or to put it differently, repetition. Yeah? Repetition is the bad noir for both three of them, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they hate that concept, but for different reasons. Nevertheless, they are very similar. Talking about Shkowski, I don't think I have to spend much time on Shkowski here. Shkowski is a uh, known figure. His key concept of deep familiarization is based precisely on the concept of harvesting. Okay? He actually says somewhere that in the moment you can systematize uh, the familiarization artist, okay, it's the telos of art, to shock you, to force you to see the world through new eyes is yeah. Of course, Schmidt is and is not similar, but basically he too believes that law, the most important thing about law, of course, is the exception. Okay? While uh, the um, um, positivistic Positive, even uh, legal theory, somewhere like Ellison believes that it is precisely the repetition. It's a logical process where you automatically or logically deduce uh, the application of the law from the basic law. Schmidt cogently argues this is not the way. His trick is, of course, he is the weak point of, of Ellison or positive law is the idea of. Grown as the, the basic law, the constitution, to put it in simple English. Yeah? But his argument is that the uh, you know, uh, constitution is a priori outside the law. Yeah? It is something which authorizes the law, which makes it possible, but it is de facto outside the law. It's a political act. Yeah? A bunch of guys. And how many fathers get together in Philadelphia and basically Yeah, all the where is the legality? Of course they were guerrilla fighters, so how did we be freedom fighters? Was the American idiot for this? 
So uh, the practical he extends this 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 um, argument and claims that every law, every application of law is the fact of simulation. Yeah? And this is precisely the strength of law. Yeah? If law was only universal, it would die, it would stagnate, it would not be applicable to infinitely changeable reality. So this is one aspect of it. Of course, the second, well, you have to make the law, I mean, how, I mean reality is infinitely a particular. Event. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have to modify every application of law. It's a modification law. It must be. So, you know, this is what it means. And, of course, the second aspect that intrigued me is the political aspect. Yeah, political aspect, because uh, uh, for Schmidt, law is ultimately a political business. By political, he means it is based on the uh, distinction of opposition, friend, and enemy. Yeah? And uh, basically, uh, um, uh, this, uh, you know, the, we change the law, we overthrow the constitution, our constitution, is because we are trying to save the state. Yeah? There are two ways of doing it suspending the law. And then reinstitute, reinstitute it again, or basically smash the law and create a new regime, new uh, social organization. So, uh, and it intrigued me uh, in a sense that you know, Shklovsky de facto is a political uh, thinker. As in so far as we accept that uh, and enemy opposition is the basis of politics. And so obviously the, the, the um, you know, futurists were extremely political. They were militant enemies of the previous generation. Defamilization is, as from the Harvard Bloom would say, killing of the others. They were smashed. There is no compromise. Actually, in the same way that Schmidt lambasted the liberalism of Kant, he lambasted the aesthetic liberalism of, 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 uh, of the symbols. Yes, and basically everything was good. <laughs> so, you know, the black force, but everything should be okay. And I kind of do a little rhetorical trick there, and I take the uh, Shkowski's famous statement that the literature uh, heritage passes not from father to son, but from father, from uncle to nephew. And in a clever way, <laughs> I actually <laughs> derived this, the origin, the subtext of this, uh, of this uh, statement from Karl Marx from 18 Linnaeus. And also from his uh, French ideology. Yeah? It's, it's kind of a, you know, I had some discussion in most time about this. And people kind of like saying it's too much for Vishkovsky, you know, read that. <laughs> no, 18 Brimer is so famous that I would be surprised if that's the first person. Yeah. You know. yeah, no, no, it's the history of French ideology. Yeah, history of French ideology. Yeah. So, uh, to be Shkowski and to be Karl Marx, he should have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's actually in his uh, monument to the uh, scientific error, which is you know, his idea of error, which is kind of an opera in his paper, he actually says he should read Marx in, in his totality. You know, it's, it's an anti leninist anti-Stalinist jab. You know, we shouldn't read the reduced Marx, but Marx as a serious thinker. So whether he read it or not, the, the, the similarity is too nice to be <laughs> omitted. Yeah? So this is uh, the, the other thing. And uh, then uh, what kind of intrigued me is uh, 
kind of a, uh, uh, in, in Schmidt, Schmidt, of course, is usually not universal. Uh, believe, but, you know, most of Schmidtian or Schmidtologists believe that he was a conservative Catholic. Yeah, that's a contrast to this not very important. And, of course, uh, he has a book called, you know, The um, Theology, uh, the, the uh, Political Theology, in which he claims that the concept of law is religious concept, and violation of Law is, law is uh, sort of a miracle. Yeah? Yeah, this is a for our discussion this morning. Yeah, there is the, he would see miracle as something counterfactual, as exception. That's precisely why this miracle. If it were not, <laughs> it would not be a miracle. So he links together the idea of exceptionality with theology. And if you again, I added some creative reading to Shkowski, and in it, Shkowski surprisingly, for somebody who is pretty religious, has a lot of references to uh, <laughs> a biblical miracles, yeah? especially miracles of Jesus. And if you look at his uh, programmatic statement, his first statement is, is a formalist statement called the Resurrection of word. I mean, you know, the, the uh, uh, religious uh, aspect of it is obvious. And Shkowski is aware of it. He's actually joking about He says so, uh, the first reviews or announcement of this publication appeared in religious <laughs> sections of Russian newspapers. And it is, it is sincere matter. So perhaps because the Types that are used an old fashioned <laughs> form. <laughs> so it misled those people. So the, the kind of the religious aspect is kind of interesting. And religious as basically as exception, yeah, as counterfactual. Then I threw uh, this Yao side of it, argue that, you know, before me I always kind of try to. Use other proxies. Um, uh, that uh, you know, Yao was the first one noticing the curious, a curious um, uh, similarity analogy between between Popper and Jobs. Yeah, that the idea of uh, he, he speaks about uh, you know the importance of mistakes in uh, building up knowledge. Yeah? so it's like. A, Blind man, you bump into various obstacles, and bingo, you know they are there. So he uh, uh, yokes it up with uh, uh, defamilization. Yeah, art actually has, is making us aware of reality precisely by uh, cognitive dissonance. I mean, it cannot be the way, but you know, <laughs> we start to think about it. And I go through. Uh, Popper, you know, three, four pages. It's the idea, of course, he was a philosopher. So the primary object of this score was inductivism. Okay? On the one hand, of course, he's using the old Jungian critique of him, uh, um, inductivism. On the other hand, he adds something of his own. Yeah? And uh, basically, our uh, our the scientific practice is a Krebsian game. Yeah? We, we basically, you know, since repetition leads nowhere, and we don't have to repeat the human argument is obvious, it's endless. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, how do we advance knowledge? We basically throw in some theories, uh, inductive. Yeah? And of course, this is not the best way of doing it. Uh, Sure, proof way of gaining knowledge, but it is falsified. Yeah, it's notion of falsification. Science lived of falsification. All these fancy theories we kind of throw at the reality are necessarily falsified, and we learn something through this trial and error uh, procedure. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, and uh, he actually, I quote him as a long quote. Uh, he says that you know, uh, 
uh, actually science is defamiliarizing our uh, view of reality. It basically shakes up our understanding of what the outside world is. And I call some uh, some uh, um, um, commentator Alan Popper who said, you know, that usually we see knowledge as proceeding, uh, proceeding from ignorance to something which is known. He, he can be science for him proceeds from known to unknown. And the stress is un un unknown. And uh, uh, in this way, of course, uh, uh, you know, we are shocked, we are surprised, we, reality is the film of deep from the realize. And this is the ongoing process which can never end. And then I kind of made a more funny way switch to the religious city of, of Popper. This is kind of a, a kicker because you know, the problem is religious. But if you look at it, uh, pronouncements. Yeah? I mean, uh, you know, Newton's uh, law must be falsified. Must be falsifiable. Even, uh, otherwise, it is it is ideological. So it's like Marxism or psychoanalysis is true. So, which means that you know, uh, there must be ever slight possibility of me dropping this glasses and they were power in front of your fly up. Oh, there, must, there must be a chance for falsifying movement. However, in the moment this happened, I mean, I would be witnessing a miracle. Yeah? So for, for Popper, the idea of science is very nearly true. It is rooted in supernatural, in miracles. The circle closes and I'm not. Thank you for this <laughs> listening. I think I'm first. Sure. Uh, and then are you going right after, or are we? Yeah, we can go with this. Or I can use it, you know, my remarks are brief and they're not questions per se, so they might be working the conversation. So go ahead and. Okay, so, okay, so my comments are also relatively brief uh, because I think most of what we're going to do is spend time talking about. Of the implications of the readings and the specificity of the readings. But um, there are many people, you could have juxtaposed with Shklovsky, and uh, you chose to do this with Schmidt and Popper. And the ambition is to tell us, as I understand it, at least in this context, something new about how we might understand Shklovsky by uh, putting them, and perhaps also how we understand Schmidt and Popper better, uh, by the move. So the first point I want to raise is how we might construe this act of juxtaposition. So on the first reading, I thought it was a great choice, set of choices. I was like, this is odd. I would never put them together. All three, the reason why I liked the choice of all three is all three are foundational for different theoretical schools in the present. And foundational in this kind of totemic, untouchable quality. Popper less than the other two, though. Uh, Shklovsky for formalism within comparative literature, although we have heard this morning how besieged that is. Uh, Schmidt is the healthiest of the three. It's a particular strain of conservative interpretation of the law in political theory where Schmidt is, has resurged. Um, he's the most problematic individual of the three, uh, but I'll leave that in a second. Uh, and Popper for certain kinds of post-positivism in the philosophy of science, although you will find very few Popperians today, except for my undergraduates who are all Popperians. <laughs> um, but, uh, but there's a way in his critique of uh, certain reading of Vienna Circle, logical positivism, uh, foundational for the critique of positivism. And the symmetries and parallels between their thoughts are intriguing. But um, you leave the comparison essentially entirely at the level of the structure and topologies of the theories. Um, and because my head is flat, I wanted to historicize the picture a bit. So all three men develop their ideas of religion largely in the points. Uh, even though Popper publishes the demarcation work in the 50s, he says, I started this in 1920. He published a two volume one, but they, he, he redoes it in Peter, the Peter House talk that's in the Reserve. Yeah, yeah, but this is what, what he claims at least. I yeah, the yeah. Eyes, but he claims this is my notes from. Yeah, he, 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 he claims that. No, right, I, I'm going to take him at his word there. Ah. I think there's probably some punching. Ah, um, but um, but uh, all three are presented here without having any of their politics written in. 
And this is what's interesting about it. So Shklovsky is a futurist artist, uh, and also a socialist by many reasonable definitions of socialist, although not by limits. Um, Schmidt is uh, an ardent conservative, whether he's Catholic or not, and an unrepentant Nazi sympathizer and endorser until he dies in the 80s. Uh, and then, uh, so those are rather alien polluted views to most scholars today uh, on both sides. Uh, Popper is more typical. He's an old school deities liberal. He's worried about the twin evils of fascism and socialism. He hates both. Uh, but um, in the particular context of fin de siècle and post war Vienna, uh, where liberalism has a particular meaning. Uh, the disciplines that emerge with these thinkers unplug them from their political context. They're not interested in Shklovsky's politics or Schmidt's politics, which is embarrassing, or Popper's politics. So what happens if you write the politics back in? That is, does it change your analysis if you actually take their political commitments alongside the structure of the theories? I don't know. Question one. Um, so hypothetically, I think it makes the parallels weirder. Right? There's no political affinity between the thinkers. Uh, they don't read each other, as far as I can tell. Popper may have read some Schmidt, but he certainly read no Shkolsky, and the other way around, also. Uh, and they're in different disciplines. So maybe this, uh, to look for the event rather than the pattern, there might be something about the conjuncture of the 1920s that can partially explain the parallels. I don't know, a reaction to World War One, different transitions within their field. Uh, so I'd like to hear your thoughts about what the politics might do to get it back in. The second point, and this is brief, is what the stakes are for each other. Um, that is, who are the positive and the negative exemplars for each? So for Shklovsky, positive, futurism, negative, symbolism. Right, like symbolism and positive. And positivism, and yeah, yeah. For Schmidt, good, fascism, bad, fire or republic. He was not a fascist. It's kind no, of well, no, no, he, but, 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 you know, say, so, 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 and for Popper, the good is Einstein and the bad is Freud. And that's quite explicit. <laughs> also do it. Yeah. So when you ramp that up, you get Napoleon, Hitler, Einstein, and Kalednikov. <laughs> as a parent, which is weird. And, and so I, I, I'm curious about how, when we, when we flesh out more of the specific interlocutors they have, what it does to the parallel, that, uh, and how we can push a little further on the similarities, which I agree are striking in the ways you put them forward. So those are the two uh, points I wanted to make. I, I, I have like some, I read mean, Popper slightly differently than you, but that's like, but that's a minor issue, because what we're interested in here is how the qualities them work. So that's all I have. Uh, so Mike was a separate account. <laughs> so everybody can think whatever they want to think. Um, but but I'm, I'm very, I think both of these are basically points about historical specificity. Oh, what are the historical engagement? And it might be that it's just not your project, or that it obscures more than it reveals when we do so, in which case that would be good to know. Or it might make the parallel more intriguing by locating a particular set of binaries that people in three disciplines that have no connection to each other today all think are real that are rooted in like Weimar debates. Uh, and that that would be interesting to know whether we're still rehearsing this post-World War One moment a century after it began. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So should should I, I guide one? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, uh, you are absolutely right. I'm famous for you know, coming up with typologies which are suspended. But, but it's very useful. It's <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <I'm laughs> a critique of the Russian is the same. When you come up with these uh, tropes, by you know, my one Marxist uh, critic wrote that you know, it's a scandal in the whole book of Russian formalism. I don't mention the October Revolution a single time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, uh, the idea of what I'm pursuing is purely intellectual. Mm -hmm. I but you are right that you know it's 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 weird and you know I I, I want to be weird. So mm -hmm. yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Because on yeah. the one hand, of course, he rejects um, symbolism, blah, 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 but he is against Spencer. Is, you know, the yeah. noir is the um, saving of mental of yeah. 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 So uh, in both three of them, you will find the, the, good, yeah. the, the critique of positivism. But otherwise, of course, politically, and politically, I, I don't think, uh, you know, what intrigued me was precisely the disparity of this. Right. Disparity of this. It's kind of out of blue, these guys who have very little in common except for this critical positivism come with very similar ideas. And this, this is kind of unusual. Yeah, but that, but that puts your finger on something about positivism. It seems like that's where we might look yeah. for something. I agree. The problem is it's a little bit messy. Yeah, but of course. Yeah. It would, it, I could kind of theorize about it, but it was coming I mean, beauty. To my standards. So, the beauty is kind of the, the, the smoothness of the argument. Once I start to kind of like complicate it, it will be perhaps more yeah, instructive. It's also that, that Spencer is a positivist in Russia, but the Germans don't think he's a positivist, and the French don't think he's a yeah. positivist, and he doesn't think he's a positivist. Yeah. But so, the, the, that's also a different positivist. Of course, but in Russia, he was channeled into Russia through this. Uh, is your, is your, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, but though he's, he's read as a positivist there, but he's not read as a positivist anywhere else. Yeah. So. Yeah. About, about Schmidt, and of course, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it seems to me that uh, he was not an ideological Nazi. Yeah, he, he was a shameless opportunist. But uh, he basically, in it, when he was defending democracy, he was the one who gave us the idea that parties which would like to change the regime through unconstitutional means should be bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, so he, he's not, he is not uh, somebody who would be uh, ideal of How does that work consistently with the theory, that argument? I, I just, I've never understood it. Yeah. Uh, how does it work with his theory? Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, ruthless, you know, it's a politics. You have to basically design enemies. So enemies can be killed by any, any means. Oh, okay. So, and it's not saying they have no right to try. It's that the state has a right to try and stop them. Yes. Yeah, so has the duty to do it. Basically, he said, German nationalists, yeah? right. state is all, regime is uh, at the that phenomenon. Yeah, it's uh, whether with every democracy or fascism, the German nation is probably what is the most yeah, and if, uh, it is self defensive mechanism. Politics is self defense. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, and I try to argue it as well, in Shklovsky, uh, I mean, uh, uh, defamiliarization, at least early on, is a self defensive mechanism. Uh, entropy or kind of the, the repeated uh, perception of the same. The same basically dulls our cognitive assets. We are basically that. So it is a cognitive tool. R, as I would agree, yes, and better than Prozac, which talks in a good way and basically makes you a level. Yeah. And you know, Peter, here is where the theory of frustrated expectation comes. Yeah. Because it becomes a doctrine of modernism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not only he is obviously a modernist, but yeah. you know, all of them were with you know Barker and uh, Schmidt were with the idea of frustrated expectations. Mm -hmm. Law and science is the domain of frustrated expectations. So politically obviously they are not connected. Yeah. I, I, I cannot find that. No, no I, it's, it's the lack of connection that I think is yeah. interesting, which is why looking for something deeper uh, where a crisis of European positivism, the implications of the war, there's a couple of things you could look at that affect all three and push them in these particular directions possibly. Well, absolutely yeah. right. It's the, you know, these are the you know, Germany, Austria, Russia, yeah. Yeah. the big countries. Mm -hmm. These are countries which lost the war and they are in chaos. So uh, this is, you know, the World War One had a profound effect on these people. You know, they are groping to find some way out. So this is a new kind of a reverse. So you know, they are turning positivism upside down. You know, mm -hmm. A smart step. <laughs> well, <laughs> 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 
are the fees. So uh, this is this might be a, a one connecting feature. No, again, it would make my paper other mess. Oh no, 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 no I'm not saying it's for you. I think it's for us. No, 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 but what is interesting for this discussion is this, this kind of insistence on uh, an exceptional across the board. It is not just literature of the humanities. Law and science are deeply contingent. Yeah? The contingency is the, 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 the decisive you know, the defining feature. So this would kind of uh, go against the you know, digitalization, against the statistic, against the violation of uh, expected is what makes this explicitly what they are. Yeah? So this, I think, is important for our discussion. <laughs> Please. Well, I, I was wondering if I could maybe add a couple of more um, associations. It seems that there may be a chain of associations I mean, with the uh, system and exception uh, uh, respectively, right? So with system, I hear something that is dead, right? automatizing. Uh, the exception is that which infuses the way back into that system. The system is something that is essentially superficial. Right. Whereas the exception is the underlying, the foundational, underneath the system that has been constructed. There is the moment of the estrangement on the basis of which a new aesthetic is constructed. And then, right, similarly with Schmidt, right, the law, blah, 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 but the exception is what found, found it, grounds it, essentially. And then you have this notion of objectivity or sociality on the side of the, of the system, right, and the exceptional on the side of the subject. So you have the subject's forceful capacity to tear himself, right, himself out of the automatized stance, right, whether on the level of perception or on the level of, um, on the level of a kind of transcendental distancing, self-distancing from, from uh, uh, and, and, and a kind of reacquisition of the free, the, the, the miracle of free. So, so what this makes me wonder, right? So once you add those those several uh, layers of associations, I think there's the ideology story, right? Uh, uh, more recently, right? And, and and the shared one. And I think I was thinking as I was listening to this, I was thinking of somebody who diagnoses this very thing in, in uh, 1918, right? In uh, uh, specifically Mukachev's uh, continuous bourgeois. This is really what modernity has come to, right? This precise juxtaposition, right? The rarefied system, the supposed miraculous exceptional subjectivity or individuality, the irrational, the core of the irrationalism, right? The thing in itself that grounds the, the phenomena, the systematic nature of phenomena. Right? So he's driving this by reading German idealism. Right? But essentially, this is his diagnosis of what modernity, bourgeois modernity, happens. And so, in a way, right, this would go very well. This Popper, right, Popper, Shkowski, and uh, in some way, it's Popper, Shkowski, and, uh, and Schmidt would go very well with the school, with the whole Frankfurt School interpretation of the three world systems, right, fascism, Stalinism, and capitalism, as essentially based on the right, common ground. Right? So, so that would be one paradigm in each one. You know, you can find some obvious intellectual sources, at least for some of these people, Bergson, and the idea of you know, breaking Nietzsche. repetition. I mean, it sounds like, like Bergson, both. Nietzsche. Or Freud, where it's, it's the mistake, the slip in the yeah. tongue that tells you the thing well, that's actually. After yeah. the yeah. joke. Yeah. No, it's that it's, 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 it's uninteresting. It's breaking up. Mm -hmm. That suggests another crowd. You want to give the no, go ahead, not to The parallel between, without that they're having read each other, Kowski and uh, Popper. Now, Popper has a third world. That's the full private interior world of Kant, you know, where you only spew out your impressions and so on. Remember that in Popper? No, no, it's doesn't ring the bell. Yeah, there's the thing which he calls the third world. In which, in which, I mean, he wrote for 60 years, so is yeah. it early Popper or late Popper? 
Uh, I don't remember. It, it's because I, I ignore the late offer. Yes, it, it, where he does like it will become almost, almost, almost openly religious. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's like yeah. yeah. That's I, I, I yeah. Yeah. Because if I take the into account the development the of the man because he makes room for the artistic. I mean, we can gloss it that way. And that's the other bridge I wanted to suggest to you. That what's the relation between religion and art? It's consciousness. The religious, con I think, religious consciousness, you know, when you strip away ritual, it's the attitude towards the object, which can be religious without being a religion. The mystery, the, uh, the miracle, all of these things, that don't need to be tied down to any particular religious confession, I think is what, and it would fit with Shkosky because he's obviously a, uh, he's Jewish. Half Jewish. I okay, mean, but, you know. This famous, famous remark is, you know, this piece of a Bible, this is that old book, but my father read from right to left, my mother from left to right, <laughs> and I don't read what's <laughs> you know, the But quotes all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, the Russian proverb uh, saying, "Жид крещеный, что вор крещеный, or is вор крестовка." The Russians have this, and I think it's believable in the Russian context. The fact that you came from a Jewish milieu and Shkov all together, you know, it's, 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 it's settled that from Shkovsky comes to Shkov. The what do you recover? When you make an allowance for a frustrated expectation or defamiliarization or deautonomy, you're making an allowance for the religious, the religious. No? Would you agree? No, I, I'm not yeah. 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 Use these yeah. biblical, so biblical. Think, But that's one way of hypothesizing. Yeah. We're kind of hypothesizing yeah. the structural moment of the event right. with the yeah. yeah. Although, it's I the only one, I don't think this works that well Popper. Popper doesn't believe, so if a miracle is a suspension of natural laws, Popper doesn't believe in natural laws. Yeah. 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 They, they don't exist. Uh, they, they, all that exist are statements that are provisional. It's true, but he believes in falsification. If no, what is falsification? No, falsification is this proposition, which is provisional, is seen to be false. But it's not because that proposition, like Newton's laws, were laws. There are, it's a radical skepticism towards truth. Yeah. There are no true claims. That's so, true, but if you are too skeptical, then you know, the audience that think that you cannot have in falsification. Uh, I don't think that's, I don't think that's, it, you, you can say the statement, he believes you can say that false and true aren't symmetric, so you can say the statement is false without having a notion of uh, That's true, but how, what is false then? What, what does it mean to fear? Yeah. I, I, no, no, I, 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 I'm not going to defend Popper's <laughs> ability to I say this, that. but he thinks that this is a, a tenable position. But he is not a theorist, he is kind of a humanist. On the edge. Uh, but, but, but again, this is where the Popper readings are. Uh, of course, I mean, yeah. Popper. But, 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 but absolutely, there isn't a notion of natural of law in, in that works quite as strongly as in the others. He doesn't yeah. speak about law. He yeah. speaks about yeah, some uh, you know, primary or general and particular. But the reason why no one is any more of a period is in part because this this radical absence of truth mm -hmm. is very disturbing. Oh, my undergrads believe that, that Popper resolved the demarcation problem. Yeah. All things that are falsifiable are not science. All things that are possible are not are, are science. And uh, you won't get any philosopher to tell you they agree with that, because to believe that requires you to have this radical skepticism towards truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you actually are consistent about it, so if you actually think through the whole and if you push the undergrads and say, well, do you believe this? And you go further, they're like, oh, no, no, I don't believe that. I hope you're scaring the daylights out of your undergrad. It comes up, at, this is, I always teach Freud, because whenever I teach Freud, there's a passage in the five lectures where he says, if you don't, people don't agree with me are basically repressed. Uh, because that's why they can't bear the truth of this. They're like, that's not falsifiable, that claim. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, that, that's where we get this conversation. But uh, <laughs> he, he differentiates between quote singular empirical statements yes. on the one hand and quote natural laws, theories, and universal empirical statements. He has yeah. the second the second set doesn't yeah. believe exists. 
No, he 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 Law, I mean the uh, Newton said that, let's not call it law. He said universal or general state. Which is why he doesn't believe in that. He, he thinks that that's not the scientific claim. The universal statement of the scientific claim. It's scientific. I mean, he doesn't say Newton is not scientific. There is problem with Newton how to falsify. Okay? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, he must be falsified. Right. That's all we will tell you. This is the idea of that. It's the counterfactual experience. Yeah. Well, okay, and then that's the experience. Well, yes. Speaking of uh, Newton, uh, uh, reminds us all uh, that uh, uh, two thirds of what he wrote was on religion. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think the role of uh, theological thinking, without being tied to a specific uh, no, phase, uh, the denomination, is, is, uh, is the one thing that not only the three people you're talking about, but a lot of other people have uh, at, at the same time. I mean, it, it, it's critical to the the the, uh, the ways that the, the three thinkers you're talking about define uh, an event versus a pattern are are completely um, uh, comprehended. By uh, theological arguments about the difference between the sacred and the profane, it, it is profound. I mean, I mean that, that which, uh, and uh, I, I hadn't seen this before, but I think this is where Freud precisely is very important in in looking at the the uh, unacknowledged uh, theological uh, source of a lot of the anxiety that is behind. Uh, the claims that are made by all, all, all three. Uh, uh, I mean, Freud, I used, I like uh, Freud is uh, obvious that I, you know, again, the strategy of this paper is not to complicate this precisely. <laughs> 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 I would ask you to, to say a couple more words about what, how the anxiety is, is diagnosed. Is that right? Well, in, in the case of, of I, I, each of these guys is writing out of a crisis. Uh, and they, they, I, I mean, it, it's present in the rhetoric, it's present in the argument that they are. Um, and the, the way in which the uh, uh, underlying, I would say, subconscious, uh, 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 anxiety uh, uh, manifests itself, is as a difference between that which is, it is uh, uh, totally outside our capability of understanding. It. I mean, it is sacred in the sense that it has the authority of being uh, unavailable. It, it, it is singular. I mean, in, in, in the astrophysical sense, right? I, I, but theologically. Uh, on, on the one hand, I, uh, I, on, on the other, there are systems that can be discredited. And, and, and the, the discreditation is always in the opposition to that authority which adheres in the uh, sacred, uh, that which is beyond uh, that explanation. I, 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 you know, one of the reasons why uh, Schmidt is, is so seductive is because of his recognition of the the primeval uh, basis of the politics. I mean, it, it, it's us against them. It, 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 it's, but but uh, this is where I, 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 so much of uh, you know I, I think it's probably a cliche. I mean, that that uh, you know post seventeenth century. Uh, everything, but but probably especially science, uh, seems to be so um, concerned in one way or another to uh, domesticate the old difference between sacred and profane 
that uh, uh, the, the whole argument about the pattern in the event, I think it's a hard one, it's a hard one, it's in different ways, it, 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 it's, it's really about the difference between uh, uh, what can be comprehended and what can't be comprehended. And the value is different. I think it comes very close to uh, making that case. Actually, what is interesting about Schmidt is a very large, it is is large sound literature. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a myth as foundational thing for for politics. Yeah, you, you need a myth to kind of like advance political agenda. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, well, the terms of it, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, 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 too, I mean, most politics are very weak. Uh, terms too, yes. which is simply a, a cover term, I think, for thinking safer. I mean, in terms that are, are not uh, uh, available to people. Maybe the uh, notion of ideology is kind of like, well, it's, 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 yeah. another way of talking. Please. So, by, by drawing the opposition between the sacred and the uh, uh, profane, I was wondering if you, how would you reconcile it with Dupre's notion? Yeah. Uh, that that, that the, the, the real opposition is not so much between the sacred and the profane, but within the sacred, between the transcendental and the sacred, that is still a myth in the sense that it still governs our being everyday life, because the sacred is gone and it's empty, and in that sense has no longer bearing on our everyday affairs. Whereas, oh, uh, thanks for the transcendent. transcendent. The transcendent. The transcendent. And uh, whereas the sacred is still has a part and has this mythical uh, role uh, that it plays in our everyday lives, much like the myth in Hamlet. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it, it's a way to further uh, to characterize with greater precision, it seems to me, I mean, the role of the sacred I mean, as it's operating. Yeah. Uh, so, I. Why? Why is that? I, 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 I mean, I, I don't understand. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, I, I, I love historical fact. I always think of myself as the pointy head in the room. Your heads are vastly more pointy. Because historians have a way of providing examples. We're good on events. We have trouble making up. So, what, Michael, as a historian, how do you see the uh, peculiar ongoing presence of uh, the mystery in, in science? I mean, but, uh, uh, now, that's just the figures that you were talking about, but I, it seems to be, I mean, the turn, I mean, of these crazy uh, uh, technologists, I, 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 I mean, who, who I, I, to, you know, bring people back to the dead of all that, I mean, it, 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 it's a part of that ongoing story. Yeah, but it's, it's, I wish, I wish Matt Stanley were here. Like, I know we have a colleague who's at Gallatin, uh, who uh, works on science and religion, but has much more to say about this than I could possibly have. I, I don't know if it's so for someone like like James Clark Maxwell, yeah, the secret in nature is precisely the pattern of the event. Mm -hmm. It's design. He's a design guy. Uh, if you believe that God reveals himself in design, it's precisely the fact that things obey laws and don't change and are normal and mm -hmm. it, that is evidence of the transcendent. Because mm -hmm. otherwise chaos wouldn't be obtained. Yeah. So I think that there is a there are a lot of different operationalizations of this notion of sacred that happen that look radically different across this period. So, and that would go on earlier, right? Thomas Aquinas thinks that it's precisely you know, the divinity is the regularity of it all. Um, that's not a coherent answer to your question. I'm still trying to digest yeah. it. So I'm. No, but it makes sense. I mean, I, I think I think that there are these two that that run together that can run together very easily because we associate pattern. A kind of coherent meaningfulness or, or a kind of harmonious uh, uh, design so right? that precisely yeah. with the sacred quite often, well right? And, and the weirdness and the monstrosity of whatever the exception is is, is being fallen. Divine order, yeah. And, and, and as, be, as, be, as perverted, you might 
And at the same Stay time, down. we do have that other emotion, which is the exception. Mm -hmm. but those two, I mean, I think that goes That's back to, good. and this I should probably say nothing about this, but, but I, uh, the debates uh, between the, the, the scholastic debate, scholasticism, right, about whether or not right, God is somebody yeah. who is right, yeah. into interfering constantly in the creation of the world. God break rules. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can he object as long as you have the experience of them? Right. right. And these are two right uh, that was that you yeah. say. Yeah. 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 And the, the I believe the general view is uh, I think the consensus ends up being no. Well there right. is the, 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 the Dunce the Dunce thinks God can break whatever rule he wants, and that's why we have the word dunce. Right? Like it's uh, <laughs> yeah. that's the yeah. thing that loses on that. Yeah. Um there's a, just a little footnote. Among physicists now, there's an idea that's uh, Quite uh, attractive that actually was anticipated by Charles Press, you know, uh, and that is that even physical laws evolve. Evolve. So that the the Darwinian analysis was physical laws, and that's now becoming more and more a part of talk among physicists that they they're beginning to believe. That it's not immutable. The physical law is something that evolved along with the rest of A very good argument for that case is in a book that I keep recommending to, to a, a, everybody who's interested in the subject we're talking about, which is uh, um, uh, 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 the Hens book on. Uh, uh, no, I, Oh, this is what coincidence has to do with it. I'm getting questions. Yeah. 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 So this is kind of another book. The relevance of this to what Michael has just said is that uh, he's arguing for uh, uh, the human uh, status of mathematics. I, that is to say, instead of seeing mathematics as something that is mysterious and, and, and beyond uh, and immutable, uh, uh, and immutable he's a cognitive he's scientist. Like, so. he, he's seeing it as, as historical, as uh, evolutionary, uh, and, and precisely uh, those uh, uh, changing definitions of changelessness are what he points to as evidence for the uh, human uh, uh, basis of mathematics. Uh, uh, it's a very compelling argument, uh, and, and it, it's also a great human story. What's the last name? D-E-H-A-E-N-E. -E. Is it seen as hermetical among other Thinkers or not? This argument. Is it seen as heretical in some way, this argument? Well, no. yeah, yeah. It's anti-Platonist. Well, yeah, there's yeah. 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 a lot of Platonists running around math. Oh, yeah. Well, then it's not like this. No, no, no. For us, for us, this is what we love. This is our thing. So he's looking at the brain when you are counting and so on. It's not very empirical. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, he's not just, I mean, everything that he writes is based on the work that was done on the study of the brain uh, at the Institute in Paris. Mm -hmm. It's another book on reading, which is also a For this uh, particular subject, I think it's important because it, 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 it's the most, um, how can I say it, scientifically based argument uh, against the uh, Platonist uh, definition of the status of mathematics. I mean, they based the actual work that that's doing the work of the humanities, I mean, uh, uh, unlike so much of what is done. But, uh, and at some point here, I agree. Well, yeah, I mean, my, my remarks are, are really a footnote here. And, um, you know, I've been thinking about essentially if this were a class for undergraduates, we would have two columns on the board by now. And then we would be adding to the columns. And one is vaguely bad and one is kind of good. And we have, you know, iterative, singular, unaware, aware, rule, exception, the crust of mechanism, 
and real life breaking through. Um, we'd have, especially we'd have repetition and, and singularity, if I did not really say that. We'd have bleak bourgeois normalcy, chess, and whatever, and revolution. Um, the dead word, the living word. And, you know, my question is, aren't these categories really gendered, and how much does it matter? I mean, I think it's, it's obvious that they're gendered in, in many instances. And, you know, my question is, do we, do we learn anything by thinking about that fact? And, you know, when Shlowski says, you know, what's Australian going to do for you? It's going to make the stone stony, and it's going to make you able to see your wife sitting on the couch. Because before you couldn't see her, because you'd seen her so many times, this thing like a rock sitting on the couch. And I, I just, that always struck me, you know, from the very first time I read Shlowski, that she was like this dumb. And, um, you know, I just, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is, this, I'm just saying these things are implicitly gendered, and what do we learn by making it explicit? You know, do we get anything out of that realization? That's the problem. Yeah. There is this, there is this, what's the guy, Nauman, uh, he said UCS, uh, Southern California, he, he wrote actually this, this, this feminist, uh, it's not, basically, argument is partially taken from uh, Tolstoy about this. Yeah. And he, basically Tolstoy at the time was having Eric Naiman. Naiman, yeah. yeah, yeah and, and he actually devoted a good deal of time, and it's very credible in sense. Oh, yeah, I just read that. Yeah, it's, it's a relatively good <laughs> <analysis. laughs> I think I that uh, the Pinaro's wife, uh, uh, Tolstoy's wife was unfaithful, there was some marital problem. He has to dust, you know, she's away, and right. you know, all the, So, yeah, he, he plays it up. Uh, perhaps yeah, I mean, I just. I don't know, Shkowski, well, he was kind of a philanderer. So. Yeah, yeah, he had a wife, and he actually took her name for a while. Right, but at this point, it's independent of the biographies of them. It's more of what work the categories do. Yeah. Yes, I know, yeah. but, but the defamiliarization is a priori. I don't think, I, don't, I think defamiliarization is, gets you from one to the other. It gets, it's the tool that gets you from one side to the other. I don't think defamiliarization is necessarily masculine. But I think that uh, seeing with, you know, Creative eyes is, and as to my sort of what gets you there, right? Isn't it just from the bridge? Well, somebody, I, I read in this paper, somebody, somebody was actually talking about query. <laughs> that basically, yeah. queer theory, you know, is but fits very well. This right. but, but, it, but it fits it popular perfectly because the language when she talks about Einstein is that Einstein daring to risk a prediction. It was like, I risked that if the starlight doesn't bend, I'm done. Whereas, He's Adler and Freud, or he's like they collect lots of data, and it's all confirming, and it's all, like. But the language is of risk and gambling is very strong. No, it's too strong. Um, would be also exactly. So no, I, I, I think the, I think the power well, Schmidt is the best. <laughs> 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 I mean, the question, I think that it's very obvious that the categories are gendered. The question is, you know, how much does it matter? What do we get from thinking about it that way? Mm -hmm. You were going to say something else. Well, actually, it was, just, it was just for that clarification. I couldn't tell if you're saying that the yeah. categories were gendered meant that that it's an impulse the construction of those categories themselves are gender impulse or not. In the sense of, you know, you know, the extent to which we want to say that there's this opposition, even though right. we have a lot of discussion about the ways in which that opposition is broken, is itself a kind of attempt to sort of. I mean, that's not a question I can answer, but I do think that's a good question. Why do we keep recreating a very similar binary over and over again? No, 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 no. That's. I was, I was just thinking about the way this ties the risk, risk at. Risk versus comfort ties to the morning. That's what, like, you know, the children, you're, you're like, oh, like, it, it, there's a, there's a, there's a mapping in the critique itself of the digital humanities thing that maps into this as well. You know? I don't know whether, again, the question is, what is it? What do we gain by thinking that way? Like, we, can, we can make the binary, and then the question is, is it useful or just interesting? Mm -hmm. Well, what is so far home? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
what, what, I, I mean, I, I, I hesitate to say this in the public, especially if it's at the secret company. But I, 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 Plus your own, too. Plus your own, too. You're streaming stream. Streaming to the world. But, yeah. What are we saying? In all of this, uh, I mean, what, what we've been rehearsing is a number of different ways to talk about the ineluctability of binaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. In some sense. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, why is that so uh, apparently uh, a crucial issue in whatever we talk about? I mean, what 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 could explain the power of binaries? And and I mean, gender is is, is one way to think about it. But I, it, it seems to me, uh, and and I think this what what set me off was your your mention of Detroit mm -hmm. uh, again that that it, it, it's it's the the uh, binary opposition of life and death. That the 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 ultimate singularity for most people is uh, the experience of of death. Wait, the, so so if your undergrad succeeds, he's the true feminist. <laughs> but, but this is what Michael and I talked about in our discussion yes. paper, which is this, you know, the power of the binary. And are we learning? Is, is it the 20s and this foundational moment that's obsessed with binarism, and that's why? And they kind of founded schools, and that's why it keeps coming back. Is it bigger than that? Is it, is it's not just binarism. It's, it's, it's that there's a binarism where one side is devalued and one side is valued consistently. Yeah, every time. It, 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 if it were mixed, and sometimes you want to be on this side, and sometimes you want to be on that side, that would not be gender. <laughs> but going back, I mean, you know, with the big remark, I learned about my paper notes, defamiliarization is a clear. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's precisely undermining this this uh, male female opposition. Yeah, it's it's well, actually you know, real. Yeah. Uh, real. Uh -huh. and so, but we're, and this is just a question. I mean, so, but it seems like the across the thinkers that you look at, there's a there feels like you're suggesting, and maybe I'm just wrong, so tell me if I'm wrong, similar texture to what counts as exception. So exception is significantly aligned, as you see it, to, to something, as it were, disruptive, powerful, um, individualizing, life-affirming, and so on. Mm -hmm. if, if, if that's the case, then it's not queering, <coughs> so far as what it's queering, the, the, what we imagine. That the binary is so upset that we can understand that sometimes we don't want to be in the framework of that binary because suddenly, for example, to be to be the other or to be the exception is to be something that's the exact opposite of all of those, something that's life destroying, something that's that's imprisoning, confining, and so on. Right? In a way, this is what I was hearing you say a little bit with respect to well, in fact, in this conversation, what happens when you know, when the patterning reverses and suddenly the fact of the pattern becomes that which you want to endorse as the sort of, yeah, from a miracle. Going back to your remark about Popper, you know, that's a very, you know, nobody wants to talk about him. Scientists don't like him, the philosophers don't like him because he's weird. Right? He's queer, he just uh, basically doesn't believe in the world. And so, and, you know, Shkrovsky, I don't know how, you know, how subjective he <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't know what Ilias is, but then I'm going to say something about no, the first uh, uh, Well, it, it, it's, it's just that I, 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 I may not understand the particular relevance of queering intended by the people who brought it up to better say what you were saying. But um, it would seem to me, if, if you wanted to invoke a sexual category, uh, not uh, gender, it, it, it would be. Um, uh, uh, what, what do you call people who swim both ways? Bisexual. Bisexual. It would be, uh, I mean, because queer, uh, 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 his, his company, at least socially, I mean, to uh, uh, stand over against straight in a way that. Uh, um, it's the mark term. It, it's, it's a mark. It's a mark. It's a mark term. Yeah, yeah. 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 In, in the technical. You know, one, one thing that's being forgotten, I think, in this discussion is that 
the querying of anything can have no issue, just the way uh, homosexuals can have no uh, biological children. So that's a very important thing, which they get around by having by adopting children or by having artificial insemination and so on. So they are actually adapting themselves to something which they can't help. Uh, but to very not the fact that you have that issue. The issue is the issue. most important thing. What's the outcome? Because otherwise, the human race will come to an end, and there's no getting around it. And the same thing with death. How do you transcend death? You do it religiously. Or by sports. No, you say that there is a life after death. But so how that Christianity would fall by the way, sir? Most Well, Jews don't have an afterlife, really. You know, they, they're, they're a clash, tribal religion. Well, that's it's what you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's yeah. a very large number yeah. of people. This is what Thomas Scully wrote in his explanation of the uh, death of uh, the Kreutzer Sonata. No, yeah, so yeah. one may ask him, what happened to mankind if we all follow this? Yeah, it exactly. wouldn't matter. Yeah. So if that state is achieved, then it becomes. Well, but that's the answer of an artist. Not a but um, going back to your question is, you know, we have, as far as I understand it, and, you know, yeah. I live in the neighborhood, but I'm not. So I'm going back. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the static binary uh, opposition which existed before these guys. You know, the, the stability was yeah. like a male. I mean, you know, women are, so to speak, you know, rigid, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, you can interpret this, you know, both ways. It's, you know, on the one hand, you can see it as, you know, masculine. You can see it as subversion of the authority. The paternal authority is going to be for it. Yeah. So, it, it can go both ways. I can do it. It happens to have not gone. The other way, three people talk, but it's they are subverting, and uh, after the article, if you wish, or some order. Yeah, you know, there is dominant father, which says it is, uh, they are fully in you know, his beard. Just because you made me think of Tolstoy, story, and yeah, you were talking before about the instances when, when um, you know, the pattern of repetition in the system become. The positively marked category, right? Mm -hmm. There are these moments, I mean, war and peace seems to be the place to look for that, mm -hmm. where um, it's background that's important, right? And if you if you kind of invest too much faith in events, you're going to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Is that? I mean, so much of war and peace seems to be a meditation on that question, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you should pay more attention to repetition and background and pattern. Is that? Would you agree? Well, it's it's. It's always tricky with us no. because yeah. no, I mean, I, 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 in a way, I agree, right? But I wonder also if there with him, there's this other category of plot that comes in, right? Yeah. Plot sure. patterning. So an event, the thing about the event is that in some ways it's the most patterned thing of all, right? Because it is part of, it's a, it's in plot. Right? Yeah. So, so it's almost like there's a distinction between, between say, scene and, and plot, right? Or or setting and plot, right? Uh, description and narration, right? And on upon that this distinction, you have a different distinction which overlaps oddly, it seems, right? Uh, as a distinction between event, non-event. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the they don't map exactly. Right. So then, exactly. Yeah. So event is is, is patterned and and non and, and non-event setting. It's not that. Right? Well, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. Th th this came up earlier with right? him. How, how would you work that into an explication of the final epilogues on the nature of history? Because it, it would seem to me, I mean, that the, um, uh, the utter dismissiveness that also, I guess, towards historians yeah. uh, 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 derives precisely from their search for the facts. I think Napoleon had a cold, so he lost it. Uh, 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 
that uh, whether you can read back into the narrative of the, the, the novel, I mean, that... that uh, you mean causality? Yeah, it's not events, it's cause. It's cause. It's, 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 right, so he doesn't want to talk about events, he wants to talk about processes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, all their problems. Right. But, but there's no causation. Right. Plus that, right. Okay, so the exactly. causation, you need to look, you, people, the instinct is to look for a point cause. Like Napoleon's cause. Oh. That's billions and billions. There, there, there is, there's still causality, but the causality is collective. Right. Well, so it's on it's on it's it's yeah. 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 That's why, I mean, thinking about, you know, the size of our of our data set. I mean, Troy basically says I could predict everything if I had all the data. I think he, he basically says if we knew everything that had ever happened at every instant from you know eternity, then I could tell you everything that is. But those things are not knowable, and therefore. No, no, just mentioned Laplace. Right, right, right. But, but, yeah, but yeah. the, 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 the mo most common consensual view of quantum mechanics is that that makes that not possible. Mm -hmm. That you can't, even if you had, you can't get all, if you can't get all the data, because uh, right. you can only know some of the data fully precisely, and the rest of the data you can know less precisely. So I think so. Toy thought that in principle you could, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, which is a very 19th century idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Distinction. Yeah. Mortals and immortals. And that was. And he keeps Irish following way. Schopenhauer very at that time. They're very, very close. Yeah. I don't know if it's relevant to this larger discussion, but it's one of the things that, that Ian Hacking, for example, argues about with respect to the 19th century, view that even no one could imagine that you are physically constrained in certain ways as a function of this you know, possible determinism that doesn't necessarily extend in these discussions to internal states, to the ways in which we may or may not think. Because we can't say necessarily whether or not we have a strong belief that there's an imposition in the physical world or the mental world. It depends on whether on how thoroughgoing your dualism is. Mm -hmm. And so that opens up a space, possibly, for imagining that you could have uh, uh, a free will, but that will that's actually right. just that's right. right. But he's that's just like, my exactly. Arm. Raise my arm. But, I, but so from one perspective, he says this is this is I feel as if I'm in control of it. From another perspective, I'm not in control of it. And there's a space for both being true. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the point being that there may be no external objective correlates to the free will that you actually have. Right. Right. Like there are 62 suicides in Paris this month. <laughs> there are always 62 suicides in Paris. Each individual one is free will, but there are 62. Right. So if you don't do it, you know you will. Like, like that, that's somebody else. Somebody else will. <laughs> <laughs> it's the <laughs> U.S. It's binary. It's always coming down to it. I always suspect the end. Could I make a suggestion? I haven't read your paper. I don't give it to you. Oh. But this discussion brings to mind something I'd like to ask the, everybody whether they agree or not. It seems to me that because of people like Nelson Goodman, like this, or I don't know if you're familiar with that, there's a general tendency to resurrect nominalism. In other words, it's never been dethroned really definitively. But um, to cast your paper, or at least give some thought to the idea of recasting it in terms of nominalism and realism, so sort of medieval debate about it, which I think is relevant. I mean, that's what I gather from what people are, are saying. And it seems to me that we're dancing around this question. Now, to my mind, it's been settled, you know, because I, you know, I feel like a broken record, but I've I've been immersed in this for several years now, the whole business of the anomalous realist uh, bit. And so you're hoping so that you are realist, I presume. I'm a realist, yeah. yeah. And I don't, you know, I think that nominalism is a false doctrine, which unfortunately has a very long pedigree and has survived into modern times. And here's the suggestion. It seems to me that if you cast it in terms of nominalism and realism, you will get a clear distinction between Without knowing, you know, that I'm speaking unencumbered by facts. Uh, <laughs> a, a, 
clear, sharper distinction between the three people that you're in Paris. Because I see, I just got this idea, which may be totally false. I, I, you know, I, I don't follow. I'm sorry. I, I understand the, diff the difference yeah. between knowing and understanding. Well, that's why I thought of not Nelson Goodman when I was in Paris. So how would that how would that resolve the issue? Yeah. No, I think he's he's wrong. I think Goodman is wrong, and I think the drift. No, I mean it would be a not so much resolving an issue, but giving a sharper focus to the three people that you're dealing with. And I was thinking of Shklovsky. He's not a philosopher, after all. He's a literary person, a literary theorist. I don't know. To me, literary theory uh, is uh, is a dangerous way of characterizing it because it can be completely uh, barren and could lead to nothing. Uh, I'm thinking of the French for the most part. Of it. Who is Shklovsky? Say, say, what, what, yes, what, 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 no, there is something about modernism. Which reifies, you know, in a way which is, uh, it's as if you impose your will. Of course, every artist does that, but in such a radical way, as if to say that we're going to create categories and you're going to, these categories are our creation, just the way anomalous says that the way we um, understand ourselves and nature is through words that we have. The abstractions are not real. They're just a function of language. But Michael is more the. Does that like, sound at all a, a romantic? Uh, you know, the romantics yeah. kind of figuring out how the different artists, you know, the difference between sentient, naive and sentimental artists. Right. Naive artist does art and doesn't worry yeah, about exactly. it. Sentimental artists, <laughs> yeah, sentimental artists think about it. Yeah, well, that's, it what, that's the bridge. Yeah. As soon as you start thinking about art, in my mind, to my mind, you're headed down the nominalist uh, Because it leads to prescriptivism. How do you do art? I mean, think of music, not pictorial art, but you know, people like Schoenberg and Schenker and all the uh, I'm a musician, so I, uh, I think about these things uh, in that in those terms. And modernism in music, to a large extent, is how do you write? It's not spontaneous, it's it's like solving a crossword. You can tell that I don't like what I do. Yeah, but all these three guys are the meta, meta thinkers. Meta. They are meta thinkers. They are thinkers about something yeah. else. Maybe. So that's probably about, I don't know whether nominalism or realism is. Well, it's just an idea. Just yeah. 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 All right. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. I wanted to ask a, a formalist specific question. And, and I guess it has something to do with both estrangement and uh, ashipko, the mistake, the notion of the mistake. Right? So what puzzles, what kind of intrigues me about that the whole tra trajectory, maybe I have it wrong, is that you have this notion of estrangement in you know, 1916, right? uh, which presupposes, again, a kind of uh, vigorous subjectivity capable of tearing itself, himself, uh, will let him be. Uh, uh, from from this, uh, you know, from this habit. Right, habit. So now, and then you get in twenty four, right, with the literary fact, uh, the Vienna, you get this notion that that same dynamism in the evolution of uh, from system to system is produced by a kind of accumulation of errors or mistakes that sort of happen on their own, are uh, processual, mm -hmm. and then like the stone that has been cast away and it becomes a cornerstone. Right. Uh, uh, then that 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 those mistakes become foundational for a new system, which will then. So what, what what I find kind of curious about this now is one thing to say. Of course, it's about it's still we're still talking about exception, right? In both cases, intentional or unintentional. Right. But we have a kind of exception that is that is invested with subjective and active stance, and an exception that is that is. That is about Chinese, but right? it's about accident. Uh, that is, that just happens on its own. That human beings simply are excluded from that. And I think this relates in ways that I'm not sure I can even articulate to the earlier question about the enemies uh, that I that I posed before for the claim. But I guess I just wanted to see what, what you said. Yeah, I think that, I mean uh, we must, you know, we must start with observing that formalism is. 
profoundly confused movement. Right. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they speak cross purpose, they are paralogizing. It's not a paradigm, I mean, it's not a major point. And especially Shkorsky. Shkorsky is a very loose thing. And he started you know, the original notion of the uh, defamiliarization concerns reality. Suddenly he switches and it is not reality anymore, but previous military forms. Yeah, so there is this, this, and you have the same problem with you know, the ego, the, the subject. Yeah? Early, probably Shkorsky would believe it's you know, the kind of a conscious subject, though it was not again the universal rule. Uh, Cruciani will definitely claim that you know it is the the, the, the misprint which is the greatest poet. And poet, yeah, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the, uh, you have a whole kind of a line of thinking of you know killing the author. Mm -hmm. Brick, yeah, if Pushkin didn't live, you know, the Evgeny and Yegi would be written anyway. Yeah, so you have this kind of a deep uh, desubjectivization of. Uh, of the process, and it is kind of a more telenomic, not teleological, but more telenomic process, which kind of a, is goal oriented but does not have the uh, kind of a discerning one subject. Uh, which was the Elish, you know, that's the reason I also focused on Elish was mm -hmm. because if I again I took in this uh, evolutionary complexity, I mean, the paper would be nice. So I very deliberately cut for his essay where he makes his pronouncement, for his people, makes his pronouncement. <laughs> 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 so many events. <laughs> and the speaker just ran away. You happen to know whether it's close to the end and I never said anything about the church and I've chased them for the years. Have any, you know, this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What did he say about that? Explicitly about that? Yeah. Or, or yeah. what was his stance? Yeah, what, because. Uh, uh, like, what was said it, but it seems to me that it's that not really a slap in, in, in uh, the public, public text. It's public text. It's public text. Yeah, but what you. I was just going to ask you this one question. You know this thing that Mykowski uh, said, Mashirchnaf Shesnov Fools. Did Shkoski ever say anything about this? He, I don't know whether he specifically, you know, I wrote a book four years ago, I really don't remember much, but uh, <laughs> no, like they are reprinting it, I have to proofread it so I will learn it again. Oh, nice. <laughs> but uh, he, in his early part, he has a review of Shkoski's Oblach Kostanari. Uh -huh. yeah, and, and, he, Mikowski. Mikowski, Mikowski, yeah. sorry, and he comments on Mikowski. I don't know whether he comments directly on Pashishi. Yeah, the reason I brought that up is it has to be factored in to any account of modernism. If there is a definite iconoclastic impulse that artists create things not just because they feel that there is a social context. And, you know, and I'm thinking also of the the business of politics that Aristotle's uh, zone of political is always mistranslated. It's not a political one. Well, it's so political and it's social. So it's the fact that politics comes in in 19th and 20th century life because of politicization. But uh, the social context, don't you think, is closer to Shkolsky's heart and not to the political, despite the fact that we're on the cusp of it. It depends how you define yeah. political. If you take the uh, Schmittian view, uh, throwing, uh, I don't know, it's, I was going to ask yeah, throwing, that. throwing uh, Pushkin from the Paracel Soviet yeah, yeah. yeah. is ultimately a political act. Yeah, it's yeah. friend enemy, and yeah, you have to have more enemy, more, more, more political. Yeah? I mean, Exaggerating, but you know the possibility. Oh, so no, 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 it's pretty close. The possibility of killing is yeah. inherent in politics. So this this icon iconoclast in yeah. futurist or formalist was to this degree political. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of a, you have to have a strong enemy yeah. to accept this. Yeah? And I kind of take it further in Junky Planner about yeah. the who, yeah, the who they mm -hmm. are. The, the, the theory of the theory of history is a coup d'etat. It's like Schmidt. 
and you have to destroy the art to save it. <laughs> it's like, you know, you destroy the regime to save the state. So, he was planning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Planning, yeah, planning it. Yeah. <laughs> and to emigrate. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they were all, all of these, maybe I can normalize, but informalists were pretty political people. You know, Jakob yeah. yeah. into Prague. So, so there would be no modernism in that part, right? Yeah. So, by definition, you can't have modernism without breaking time. Well, I mean, I think, isn't there, just to explore this possibility, right? There is a strain within modernism that's very, very staid and very traditional. Right? And nevertheless, we're, we're really to get So I'm thinking of proofs, I'm thinking of Thomas Mann. Right, those look bad. Well, T.S. Eliot even. Well, it's kind of like. Edged at times, right? But say Proust, Thomas Mann, say Henry James, right? Okay, but that's a bunch more stuff. Right, and there's also an iconoclasm not, to the realism of Zola, like there's yeah. different kinds of iconoclasm, right? Tolstoy's iconoclasm is mind-boggling, right? Now we have two types of modernism. One recycles, one which don't be a and one kind of breaks the, uh, the norms, yeah? the, 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 the events. Yeah? So, the, you know, they're, they're conservative modernism, and I saw like the other. <laughs> yeah, actually, the book is a very good case. To test all this out, you know, this this strain, because he's a he's a modernist against himself. So I'm not going to agree. He he wants to be conservative, and uh, well, he's a special case, obviously, in many ways. But he's hating the stairs, well, being the stairs. Right? <laughs> uh, a book called Flint on the on the right stone. Have you read that? And it's about the it's about um, Conservative minds, mm -hmm. conservative yeah. minds, poets. That's all about precisely the strain that you're thinking of, that, that that you're talking about, and it's arguing against the idea that iconoclasm is actually. His name is Marx. I forget his first name. The French avant-garde theorist. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Guillaume Marx or something. It's, it's something like yeah. Um, yeah. Where the, there's there there's there's a segment of the avant-garde that looks backward. That's interesting. Yeah. Right. Well, that that yeah. is in a way. I mean, more concretely, yeah, yeah, yeah. the perfect example of this. But that, I feel like, is, is not in that, right? Because because with these people, there's a sense of radical futurism and radical archivism, right? Mm -hmm. So the kind of path that they're looking for also. But the Arya Guard is more like proof. It's the people who well, are like, sort of like, like the, the richness of 10 years ago right. as opposed to 10 years from now. As um, opposed to. Uh, the the, the most antiquity, creeds, not, not that, not that. Uh, the Aguirre Guard idea is like Freud, and that's like a really comfy living room with like you know nice statues and a carpet that was made 30 years ago. It's like it's like that. Good yeah, 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 good book. Manushtam is kind of a thing by Father. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Ooh, just like Manushtam and Chulovsky, interesting clown man and nomad. Yeah, the Greeks. Yeah, even recycles. It's a recycling uh, aesthetics. Все было бы все повторится снова и сладок на вещь узнаваниями. The recognition of the same rather than strange. Strangeness is the recognition of sameness. Well, I mean, the, it may be that the people who are looking at the past are more realistic than. The revolution is that big arguments. They, 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 I, I, I mean, it, 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 in the sense that they may be closer to the way uh, history unfolds. Uh, you mean closer to reality, not closer to the movement known as reality? No, no, quite not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, necessarily, so because future is not all. Future is not real. The, 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 no, but I, I'm thinking of, 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 of the the constant return. Of this illusion uh, that, uh, that there will be a time that will be qualitatively different from what it's been historically. I mean, that, that there, there, there will be uh, a singularity, that, that, that there will be an end to history, I mean, that there will be uh, a, a second coming. I mean, there, I think of it, 
there's a, 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 a something that uh, it, uh, seems to be um, I, 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 stupid, uh, 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 naive about any uh, future, any avant-garde. But you have different curiosity future. We have different types of futures. So it's our future which are basically you no know, statistics kind of a measure of things and how it is very probable this for us yeah. uh, in a revolution that will tell you that changing the possession of means of production will establish and the other. So yeah, are different futures in this sense. Well they're both in some measures for casting. Yeah, sure. It impels me to make the comment that I just did is um, the importance in uh, uh, defining, and this is where Michael and I are going to probably disagree on it, I, 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 uh, of uh, Chomsky's idea of recursion. I mean, recursion is one way to think about the relation between pattern and event. It's, it's, it's where nothing is ever new. Right? I mean, are we all together on recursion? I mean, the, 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 the uh, repetition of something, but it's a repetition. I mean, so, so the, 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 the banal uh, example of it is the, the old rust uh, uh, cocoa. I mean, which you all are probably too young to remember, but it, 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 it shows a, a Dutch woman with, with a, a Dutch hat serving cocoa on, with, on a tray on which there is a box of cocoa oh, that has one a one woman one. delivered and, 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 and so on and so on. I mean, but there's no obedience. For Shklovsky, this is how, or, uh, for Chomsky, uh, uh, this is how uh, uh, language uh, works, that, that everything is the same, but and there, there is no end. There is no, yeah, it, 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 it's how he explains the possibility that the, the children have the capacity to say everything at a certain point. I mean, it, it, with, with limited means, we have infinite possibility. Restricted, repertoire. Right, exactly. So I still have limited. This is, this uh, is, uh, that seems to me to be, I, I, what, what the reason I asked that question is, is because it, 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 it's, it, it's a way to think about. Um, the relation between structure and event that is not uh, it doesn't let one possibility exclude the other, but it, it's not a binary opposition. That, that's its, its beauty. I mean, that it, it, it's, it permits a kind of negotiated uh, 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 singularity, if you will. That uh, it, the, the, the the distinction of uh, event X is that it's slightly different from uh, what has preceded it, but it, it, it has enough of the past still in it to be recognizable as such. So that, that seems to me to be not, not only a compelling idea of relation in language, but a compelling idea. For uh, thinking uh, historically, that uh, the uh, uh, I, I, I know you're not a, a Trump No, I, mean, I went through all that uh, when I was in Fergus, you know, at the courses with Chomsky, the whole transformational generative grammar thing. There's nothing new under the sun, unfortunately. No. So that. Um, no, because we'd like to all to be original. And I was going to say that apropos of the avant-garde, that there's nothing avant about the avant-garde once it stops being new. So it's a cliche. What is what an artist, I think, above all, wants to avoid is becoming a cliche. And how do you do that? You have to recreate yourself constantly. So, but the, as far as recursion is concerned, I mean. This is almost a platitude, that there cannot be 
anything linguistic which is not created with uh, structure as a backdrop, because it wouldn't be understood. And the goal is to make yourself understandable to whoever it is that you're communicating with. Unless you're pathological, you know, there's people going around on the streets outside that are just uh, saying... Or an avant-garde artist. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and great creative geniuses like Mozart, and maybe even Markovsky, that were known for talking uh, nonsense. You know, they were just good for the sound. They loved the sound. Mozart, particularly, loved to say things, nonsense things. Are, are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. Biography? OK. But he wasn't trying to communicate anything to any interlocutor. It was just such a, ah, Mozart is talking about. <laughs> but but, but it, 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 I, I, the beauty of recursion is that you can say things of the sort you just did. Yeah. There's nothing new under the sun. While still having available to you the possibility of a negotiated uh, novel. Yeah. The negotiation is. That's it, your point, right? I mean, exactly. But it has to be negotiable, otherwise, it becomes gibberish. Yeah. And nobody saying is going to try to communicate with gibberish. Uh, and as far as children are concerned, they experiment with gibberish, but they are constrained by the teaching generation, meaning their parents and other people, to narrow this down. Because you know it's well known that children start out bad. You know, loud talk, uh, this German word, nursery talk, and then slowly, slowly it's constrained to what they receive from the teaching generation, meaning their parents. They don't obtusely and perversely maintain innovations. They innovate, but those innovations are not sustained because they don't mean anything to the people that are around them. Well, but increasingly, studies of, of uh, uh, newborns uh -huh. has uh, uh, suggested, at least, that they, they aren't in that. That, that uh, there's a difference between the kind of that, what we used to call babble yeah. that the Japanese children make as opposed to the kind of babble that French okay. children This is, this is all good. Children of Jacobson were on part of parents PTK. Remember they did yeah. you know, these average child size PTK. Well, yeah. And um, someone Well, if you wrote that a, article, why am I not talking yeah, about Yeah, but famous linguist, I think, of Hungarian origin, Mr. Lotz, says, Mr. Jacobson, I have an infant child. It doesn't say PTK. It's a word. Well, 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 <laughs> say Mr. Lotz says, for no law, phonetically, a choice of a word. Well, 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 this is precisely the difference. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Is there it some, is, you know, the essence of language, or is it more phenomenal? But, but, I'm going to. I, I was thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the book you recommended, North, I believe. Yeah, it's, North, yeah, yeah. it's an interesting book on novelty. It's a history of novelty, it's kind of broad and explained. And he basically comes down that there are only two credible theories of novelty, either recombination or recapitalization. And, and recapitalization. It's, it's, a, it's another book, which should be uh, one of my, my majorities. Going back to the thing that you raised, it's like gender. Yeah, yeah. 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 The main point is gender. Now, binarism has been transcended in some theories of language and of, the, of communication, uh, including semiotic theories, and they are not necessarily dyadic. So there is a triad, it's specifically a triadic theory, where the third is the thing towards which the combination between sign and object falls out. Interpret them. Yeah. The thing about uh, the um, the gender thing. Um, I was going to ask the women in the audience, <laughs> since you're the the ones that uh, carry the female gender. When you see in a book an author, I just finished reading a book by an old man who teaches at the new school, Nomina Soto Diosa, where every reference to an uh, unspecified person is she. So when you read something like that, do you think that this is a mannered in English way of talking 
Why is this person referring to she? You know, most people now say he or she. They actually has a very old pedigree. You can say they to refer back to a uh, uh, unspecified as to gender. But I'm, I'm curious, because I just finished reading this book, where you can see that this is some kind of ideological gamble, which is not new. It's been done for some years now, where you refer to the unspecified referent. But why do the young women have to answer the question? We should all be. Well, because <laughs> no, I think that a man. Uh, maybe I'm. I'm just confused. confused. We don't have money. Well, I mean, in a way, I do think there's a generational. No, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, how we're just reacting to that. Do you think that this is just, you know, this is a sop to women to make them feel better? <laughs> uh, this author is trying to make me feel better. I, I think you're overthinking it. Pardon? I think you're overthinking it. Really? I I don't think. You just don't see it. Doesn't react because it's. No, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I see it one of, as one of the variations. Okay, well, that was what I was... It's not particular It doesn't, it doesn't uh, detract from the... It doesn't catch your attention. Oh, this author is making an attempt. Yeah, generation. I think it's totally generation. Yeah. Like, my, when yeah. I was in college a long, long time ago, uh, uh, my That's teacher, so well, well my, 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 my philosophy teacher would say, and this is the first instance of it, right? My philosophy teacher would say she, when she would use the third person, when she would use the third person. And it was odd to me then. It was a and she or a he? She, it was a she. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, she was a she, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how she experienced it. So yeah. I think that my account the absent. No, sorry, just a quick thing, right? At this point, I don't even register. Okay, that's what I was yeah. interested in. Because I registered. I think that my book comes from Jacobsonian tradition, where this mark, unmarked, yeah. uh, which is kind of a very important difference. Mm -hmm. as well. well, it's used to be marked. It's used to be marked. Yeah. He is smart, uh, yeah, unmarked, she is smart. So yeah. switching kind of violates the homology of language. Right? And well, that's what way. I consider an aneurysm. Well, but Mark and Mark is historically true. It's kind of like the Well, yeah, that's I'm just trying to frame my very All right. Thank you very much. You don't need to. Oh, thank you. Yeah, please, 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 my friend, get out of there.